Here is an updated video for stair building codes dealing with winder steps. And we're going to be referring to the 2024 International Residential Code Book. That requires a 6 inch minimum measurement for your steps. So that 6 inches can be located anywhere, but more than likely it's going to be located here. Suggesting that this one here won't meet that building code requirement. However, I need to point out that this might not be a requirement in your area and this type of winder setup would be acceptable. And next up, let's talk about the walk line. The walk line on a winder is usually going to come in 12 inches. So that would come in 12 inches from the smallest side of the stairway. And this distance here needs to meet the minimum requirement for your stair tread depth. And that's usually going to be 10 inches. However, I have seen them smaller and larger. 10 inches is almost a standard for residential construction. So again, that's a 10 inch minimum tread depth. It can be longer, just can't be shorter. And for those of you who need a close up of this, or this one here, one foot six, 12 inches or one foot. And again, we're coming in six inches here on both sides to meet the six inch minimum measurement requirement. And if for some reason your local building code does not have a six inch minimum and something like this will work except they require the minimum walk line measurement, then this isn't going to work here because we're just a little bit under seven inches and this measurement here would need to be 10 inches or whatever the minimum is in your area. Next up, let's go ahead and get away from the square measurement here and kind of angle off like this with our minimum measurement and our walk line. And something like this should meet the building codes with more than a 10 inch measurement at the walk line for each winder step, along with our six inch minimum for the winder steps. And let's go ahead and zoom in on this section, give you a close up on it. Six inches, six inches, and then six and three sixteenths inches here. And then if I was going to come out square, to create this design here and have our six inch minimum here, then we shouldn't have a problem with our walk line over here either. Because here we're going to have 13 inches, 13 inches. Then we're going to add these two numbers together, nine and seven sixteenths for this one here and this one here to give us almost 19 inches or a six inch difference in the walk line measurement if we measure it this way. And this could create a problem with another building code interpretation suggesting that you can have more than a three eighths of an inch variation between each one of these steps. So six inches isn't going to work. So why not measure it this way? Here we have one foot or 12 and 15 sixteenths, almost 13 inches. Here we have 13 and 3 eighths inches. And here we have the same measurement we have here. Now we're actually off just a little bit more than 3 eighths of an inch here, suggesting that this could create a problem for the building inspector, especially if these lines are not located perfectly at 30 degrees each. For example, if this angle here is 29 degrees, this one here is 29 degrees, and this one here is 32 degrees, then it could be off a little bit further. So if your inspector doesn't like this and they don't like this, then see if they like this one here where we're going to use a curved line like we would in a circular stairway. So this right here will provide us with equal measurements. And again, you've got to keep in mind that just because I've provided you with a few examples of what should work and then what might be acceptable to your local building officials or building inspectors doesn't mean they're going to approve it. So keep that in mind also when you're dealing with building code interpretations. In this video, I will provide you with a few more things you can think about when trying to spruce up your winder stairs by putting some curves in them. And of course, some of the reasons why you might not be able to, to put uh, certain types of curves in there, including this one here. If you remember, we have a minimum of six inches for the inside area of a winder stairway. And you're probably thinking, oh, wait a minute, now it's a circular stairway. 
Either way, six inches is probably going to apply to both of those. But uh, here it is. We've got a little curve on the inside. And the curve is coming from here. This would be the center point, and then we draw our circle. As long as this meets the minimum building code requirements for your area, you would be able to do something like this. So you could always, if you wanted to do something like this, you could always move this set of stairs this way and this one this way a little bit and, um, and then uh, make the winders a little larger and then you wouldn't have a problem with that. And you'll see a little bit more of that later on in the video. On the outside, um, this wouldn't be a problem either because um, usually the outside, it doesn't have a minimum. The inside does. Outside doesn't have a minimum. We also have a walk line that we would need to um, take into consideration when designing a stairway like this. And I think I'll put a link here or in the video description area. And again, you can always look that up. Walk line for winder stairs. And I, I already have a video on that if for some reason I don't get to that. But the width of the stairway usually has a minimum. And on a residential set of stairs, it's going to be 36 inches. So if I was to do something like this, I'm not going to have a problem. I'm just going to measure from here to here, make sure that it is above the minimum, 36 inches. I think what I have here is 38 inches, not going to be a problem. You would end up with something like this. Take a look at it as after it was built. Be something like this here. Not a bad design, kind of crossing over between whether it's going to be a circular or a winder stairway. But I do both of them. You might uh, want to just have one on the outside. You might just want to have it on the inside. And another idea would be to just curve this area here. Now, if you notice this one here, I use this as the center point. And over here, I use this one here as a center point to get this curve. But this curve doesn't look that good. You know, it doesn't. And you can see there's not that much of a difference just going out a few inches uh, in the curve. But we can take and change that by um, doing something like this, just simply drawing a line from the step. And you don't have to follow this. You can go a little further out or a little closer, but this one right here is going to give you a nice curved shape that's going to blend in if you use a center point here. And you're just going to be coming off of here parallel to this line. And then this one here will be parallel off of this one from both of these points. Draw your curve in there. And of course, this one, like I said, finishes off a little nicer, especially if it's up against a wall. Something like this would look nice. And again, this is kind of what I saw that inspired the video. Something else you might consider would be to simply connect the dots here and create a couple of angled sections in the wall. Something like this. Here's what it would look like after it was built. Now, I do need to point out that uh, if you have a nosing or um, some type of a tread overhang, you might need to re-modify the steps if you want the nosing to line up with these points here. So here we have a set of stairs where the there's no nosing on it. The riser is flat and uh, no overhang. A lot of times we have a one inch overhang. If that's the case, you're going to need to move the risers back the length of the overhang. One inch overhang, going to need to move the risers back one inch so that the overhang dies in here. But you might actually want the riser to die into the corner and then have an overhang. That would be up to you. Personal preference there. Just pointing it out. I know it's a big mistake stair builders make. They go and they lay everything out and they build everything to this and then they add risers to it. They might add finished materials, uh, some, um, you know, one by fours, one by six, um, one by eights for the risers and then put uh, a nosing on it and then add materials. And then pretty soon they're, um, you know, two inches away from this corner and the stairway doesn't look as nice. 
And in our last example here, I wanted to give you an idea of what might happen to the winder steps at the farthest point on the inside when you go with a longer curve. And of course, you're going to lose the minimum here. So instead of having six inches, we end up with about two inches, if that. So this again can be corrected if we move this section a little further this way and this section a little further this way so that we can um, have everything work out on this side. And that might actually make the stairway a little wider in some cases um, or uh, even uh, create a situation to where you might just want to use two steps, two steps instead of three steps for your winder. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out some of our other videos on YouTube. And if you can't find the videos on YouTube, make sure that you visit our website to find a complete organized list of all of the videos we've made so far.